All right, now we've got the card scraper in the vise. So we're gonna take what's called a burnisher. Now, this is an antique Distin burnisher. I think you can see that, it says Distin right there. But it's kind of a, uh, oh, I don't know what shape you would call that, but it's not perfectly round. It's slightly rounded with a kind of a sharp corner. And you can get very technical with your scrapers. You can use different shape burnishers to make a different type of burr and all that. But if you've got an old screwdriver that you know is hardened, you can use a screwdriver. Um, I've got an awl here. It's hardened. You can use it. I just use this because I have it. So we will start to burnish our edge. And when we start out, you want to hold it parallel to the edge. So we'll go this way, back and forth, back and forth. Then the next step would be to hold it at maybe, I usually go for about a 20 degree angle. And as we're doing this, we're gonna start out up to the bolster and then we're gonna pull it towards us as we go off. And as we're pulling it, we're pulling that burr over, kind of rolling or turning the burr, as they say. So pull it to you as you're moving down the burnisher. Then for this side, we wanna push starting at the tip and then ending at the bolster by the time we get to the end. I think I just did maybe five, six strokes on each side. And that's about all it takes. So let me get this out of the vise, get it set up, and then we'll try it and we'll see how good it works. Okay, here we go. So we've got our card scraper. Now, you notice whenever I was doing that, I said I hold it at about 20 degrees. So a lot of cabinet makers and furniture makers and woodworkers will tell you to hold it at say five degrees. Well, they're using a card scraper to have a finished surface on a flat tabletop or countertop or dresser side or something like that. And they're using two hands and they're bending the card scraper with their thumb in the middle as they go. I'm usually holding a handle with one hand on this side, and then I'm holding a card scraper like this, scraping as I go. See, just from doing that, we've got you know some of that off there. But anyways, the reason I hold it at that steeper angle is because I'm using this card scraper in a different function. So these people that tell you it has to be done this way at this angle, it just isn't true. You need to use your card scrapers the way you want to use them, try different things, and just figure out what works for you in your application. So I've got this in the vise because I'm holding the camera with my other hand, but just like I showed you a second ago, we're just going to scrape using one hand. Card scrapers can go against the grain, they can go with the grain, but I found if you go with the grain, you get a better finish. Um, but as you can see, just from doing this little bit, we've already, you know, created all these shavings and gotten down to almost virgin wood. Um, I like this handle because I realized how dark it was, and this is most likely mostly heartwood um, in the handle, I think at least, or it's just been setting outside in the weather a lot. But <clears throat> this is proof that you don't need 
any pre-made or, um, you know, mechanical little gauges or um, templates or anything like that to sharpen a card scraper. It can be very, very simple. It can be as simple as sticking it in a vise and running a file over it five or six times and using the burr that's created from the file. There's a lot of people that I know that made a lot of furniture and that's all they do with their card scrapers. So using diamond stones is even probably taking an extra step I don't need to, but I've got them so it's easy to, easy to break them out and do it. But I'm gonna keep going on this handle and I will bring you back once I've scraped most of this stuff off and then I'll show you what I do next. All right, so here's where we are. I've scraped half of it. I haven't figured out how to do a before and after shot, but here's one side. This took me maybe a minute, honestly. Um, I only did half so I could show you before and then here's the after. Um, so what I'll do next is right now, this thing is so smooth and the all the pores in the wood have been severed from that scraper. So they it will still accept oil, but it won't accept as much because it's like a glassy finish on there. You can you can see the reflection from the light even. Um, hopefully the camera's picking that up at least. But so what I'll do now is usually Sometimes I'll use 150, depending on the wood. Um, this was so weathered that I'll probably just use like a 220 on it and actually rough up the outside of it a little bit. And I'll just go over the whole thing with 120, and or I'm sorry, 220, and then I will add my finish to it. Um, up here at the top, I haven't touched any of this because that head was setting up about this high and I'm gonna bring it down closer to the shoulder. So I'll be using a spoke shave on all this and that'll be our next video. So let me uh, get some sandpaper and I'll rough this up and then we'll look at the finish on it. All right, so I took my 220 sandpaper here well you can't see it anymore but i took the 220 and i just went over the whole thing um lightly sanding it not pushing real hard or anything like that um and you can kind of see some of these checks and just cracks from it sitting outside they're filled up with dust now that's okay when by the time you add the finish it's gonna soak in there but let me add some finish and then I'll bring you back. All right, and here it is. This is after, I use boiled linseed oil, but I keep it in one, so I keep it in this big jug over here. It's an old can of boiled linseed somebody gave me, but I've put Danish oil in it, mixed it up, with boiled linseed oil and just the other day I poured some of this uh, Watco rejuvenating oil which is basically a Danish oil and boiled linseed oil mix um, so might even be some lacquer in there or something but it all pretty much works the same having that Danish oil in there gives a little darker tint but man this thing is smooth and it is looking good. Um, if I wanted to, I could sit here and sand it a little more, or I could even, you know, try to make it a little smoother. But this side, you can see, is still dirty. I got to finish it up. But going from that to that, it's a pretty drastic change. Um, next, I will show you how I refit the heads 
and that'll be the next video um i'm not sure if i want to use this head on there or not it's not the original head obviously and the stamp isn't the best on this it, like i said in the last video it's a our very best or ovb you can kind of see it there but yep that's how i scrape my handles and how i sharpen my card scrapers i hope that somebody's learned something from this hopefully you're not scared to use a card scraper anymore um, like i said it's just a trial and error thing just keep doing it and then you'll figure out your own process and go from there so guys thanks again for watching get out in your shop try to relax and have a good evening thank you